In March 2016, over 100 scientists from 19 countries came together in Amman, Jordan to discuss the importance of scientific research in mitigating global infectious diseases. A first of its kind in the region, the Middle East and South Asia Conference on the Epigenetics and Genomics of Infectious Diseases was a cross-collaborative effort nearly three years in the making. This event brought together thought leaders, scientific experts, young researchers, and international partners to address global health security concerns through scientific exchange. The conference provided a forum for sharing information and enhancing regional and global capacity through partnership. Your Royal Highness Princess Sumaya bint al Hassan, Your Excellency Ambassador Alice Wells, distinguished guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad, al Nabi al Arabi al Hashimi al Amin, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Virtually everyone is familiar with MERS, polio, influenza, Ebola, and the latest, the Zika virus. And that's because with all the benefits of our increasingly connected world, there are challenges, such as the rapid spread of infectious diseases and news stories about their devastating impacts on societies. We hear a lot about the, the Arabian world, but I think we have a lot. We can achieve more, and uh, I'll, I hope you will be convinced that at the end that this is one of maybe the success stories that we have in, uh, in our region. Emerging and re-emerging infectious disease in our region is a major area that still need to be strengthened. Emerging diseases like the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, coronavirus, and other endemic infectious diseases such as brucellosis continue to impact the Middle East and South Asia. The challenges of the region exacerbate the impacts and probability of outbreaks. The best way to stop an outbreak is to recognize it as early as possible. Detecting and diagnosing infectious diseases depends on understanding pathogens in the environment and having the technologies and capabilities to analyze the samples. The One Health framework of considering public health and uh, stability of economies around the world is very important. I wish the world leader, they come out of this, they change only one word, from national interest to human interest. Whether natural or intentional, disease outbreaks pose a risk to the global community. A threat anywhere is a threat everywhere. For almost 20 years, the Defense Threat Reduction Agency's Cooperative Biological Engagement Program has worked to address this risk by strengthening partner countries' capacities to safely and rapidly diagnose, detect, and report dangerous infections. The foundation of the program is strengthening international research partnerships to answer questions that will better inform biosurveillance planning and more quickly detect and prevent outbreaks before they occur. The complexity of many of today's grand challenges in the health science arena and otherwise uh, all but demand collaboration. You can do good work for your career, you can do work for your people, for your country, for science. Both of us are bringing something to the table, and almost certainly, both of us need each other. With rapid environmental changes and increased movement of transboundary diseases in humans, animals, and plants, it has become more important to collaborate across regions for biosurveillance and to understand the ecology of infectious diseases. We must all commit our talents and resources to exploring ways in which research in the fields of epigenetics, genetics, and pathogen infection may be applied to improve regional disease surveillance and characterization of especially harmful infectious diseases of regional and international concern. Scientists from around the world have been studying the genetic causes of the human condition and disease for decades. Today, advancing technologies in computer, data, and life sciences are transforming the way biology is studied and understood. Some scientists now study biology as a system of complex traits intersecting and affecting each other. The transformation has led to new discoveries about the molecular basis of disease, microbial function, and host pathogen response. Epigenetics is the study of how genetic traits are affected by the external environment. Scientists across the Middle East and South Asia are engaging in studies to understand the genetic and environmental causes of disease. Recognizing how to prevent and detect outbreaks of transboundary infectious diseases increasingly relies on leveraging the world's scientific knowledge and capabilities in genomics, epigenetics, and other related fields. 
In this challenged global environment where infection and spread can happen at a staggering rate, we are indeed fortunate that so many Middle East and South Asia countries possess the skills and the necessary infrastructure to carry out both genomic and epigenetic studies. But as with so many challenges that we face as a region and as a networked science community, we may only succeed in countering threats and preempting hazards if we work together in order to share our resources and insights. It is for this reason that meetings such as this are not just desirable, but essential. There is a science renaissance happening in, in the region. There is, there is interest. A lot, of, a lot of the Gulf countries in particular are realizing that they need to invest in science. Oil will eventually run out and they are looking at that and they're putting a lot of effort into that. So understanding this interaction between the host pathogen and the environment is key to reducing this threat of infectious diseases and the health security of the world. Face-to-face -face interactions are key to sharing information about existing research interests and promoting trust and partnership among scientists. Through formal and informal communication during the conference, scientists from the region and around the world had the opportunity to develop new collaborations that leverage existing scientific interests, technologies, and resources. The conference provided a unique occasion for attendees to engage, learn about key biosafety and security resources, and explore creative ways of linking scientific knowledge with decision-making for health and the environment. The long-term benefits from the conference will be realized in time, for now, attendees continue to communicate routinely and have already developed publications and new proposals together. This conference will also promote regional capability building for pathogen research and surveillance and thus strengthen global efforts at disease control. As Louis Pasteur, the famous microbiologist, once said, science knows no country because knowledge belongs to humanity and is the torch which illuminates the world. The relationships, collaborations, and scientific networks forged at the Middle East and South Asia Conference on Epigenetics and Genomics of Infectious Diseases will hopefully continue to grow and lead to greater exchange of ideas, data, and expertise to better detect and prevent future outbreaks. The Middle East should not be defined only by its conflicts. Let us shine a light on the potential of its thinkers and its innovators. In this small world, this small petri dish, uh, we've got to work together. Uh, there's just no other way. While the science is exciting, these relationships are really, really important as well. We need teamwork and communities of trust to deal with the enormous natural and behavioral challenges that we face today and those we will face in the future. In these two days, I grow as scientist more. <laughs> it's, of course, it's a big benefit for me and for my country. Now we will sit together and to exchange the experience. I found it is a very uh, useful. I think this, this meeting is very important. I think the issue of epigenetic and, and uh, looking at infectious diseases that are emerging uh, globally and also in the region uh, are critical. And I think making collaborations, uh, working together uh, as scientists in the field uh, with international collaboration is also very important. I think that the field of epigenetics is so interesting because it really incorporates what happens from the environment and um, helps to uh, identify or determine how different infectious diseases interact with their hosts, how the hosts may or may not be more susceptible or vulnerable to different infectious diseases, how uh, they move around. The field of genomics in our region is quite advanced, but in relation to epigenetic, it's still it's less advanced in comparison to the uh, you know, United States and the West. Frankly, such meetings bring you in touch with people who are having similar problems in the region, especially other scientists. So I really think critical is the fact that we need to have people to collaborate with. I think this conference was a very good opportunity for young scientists to look at role models like, like scientists that are uh, had achieved like 40, 30 years of, of career in this field and some of them are working on inventing a lot of the uh, like most modern vaccines for MERS-CoV, for HIV, they're still experimental, yes, but this is a very good chance for them to see re really see people instead of reading about them. In um, an increasingly complex and ever-changing world, conferences like this are incredibly important and will become even more so um, as we continue to build 
um, international and regional collaborations and trust with our international partners. I think this is a critical and great venue in which we can do that. To sustain this network, you need more to meet more people, to have like these conferences. I'm not talking about me personally, anyone in my ministry. So it will become sustainable networking and collaboration. I think this is a great stepping stone from what we've been doing in the past together to all kinds of opportunities for future collaborations in more pure science.